What's going on turd nerds? Matt with Operator Mindset here and in today's video we are going to be looking under the microscope at one drop of wastewater. That's right. Here at this plant it is a activated sludge process plant meaning microbes meaning bacteria actually consume the wastewater and we as operators part of our job is to take care of those bugs and to study them and to make sure our process is going the way we need it to go. So today we're going to get us a sample of wastewater. We're going to put one drop on the microscope slide and we're going to take a look and see what's inside the wastewater doing the job and talk to you about why it's good, why it's bad, what it is, right? Let's head back into the lab, check out the microscope. Alright, turd nerds, here we are underneath the microscope, finally, right? Let's see what we got here. Again, this is activated sludge process as far as wastewater goes, and the activated sludge part of that means living. So they are, there are microorganisms in there, bacteria consuming that wastewater, and the way we can relate to those, um, see what the bacteria is doing, the way we can see what the bacteria is doing is by studying these microorganisms and knowing uh, their life phases and their processes. So we're going to start right over here on the slide and we're just going to start scrolling up. What you're seeing right now is just flock and right there, boom, we have our first organism. Not sure if you noticed it or not. We're going to try to zoom in on there. There we are. Our first organism of the day is a stalked ciliate. This is exactly what you want to see in the activated sludge process these bugs are great it's okay if you see one it's okay if you see a bunch you do want to see a predominance of them if you see that the indication of those of their predominance means that your process is probably operating at peak capacity and those are a very good thing to see they're cool little guys you can catch them like this he's just single chilling hooked onto that piece of flock there and sometimes you see just massive bouquets of them. It literally looks like a bouquet of flowers. And I've seen them where they just take up the whole screen, the whole shot there. So really cool to see that right off the rip. And that's a great first bug. So let's start scrolling up the slide a little more. All right, focused back in. We're also studying our flock here. As we're looking at the flock uh, as operators and from under the microscope, we can see how it's performing, how it's clumping together. Uh, some of this stuff looks pretty small that I'm looking at. It's not bad, it's still a light color. That's just a huge air bubble if you're seeing that on the screen. Don't freak out or anything. That's just where I didn't get the slide just right. Um, we're going to keep moving up though and see what we run into next. And here we are. We got a couple of different varieties of critters on the screen there. And what we're looking at is there are there is a stalk ciliate, a sheathed stalk ciliate. The pronunciation pronunciation of that name is um rather difficult so I'm gonna say it once for the sake of the video and then from then on we're just gonna say stalk ciliate in a sheath because it's a little bit hard but it's up there on our chart actually it is a vaginicola so to keep me from having to constantly say that in case we see more of those fellas we're just gonna say it's a stalk ciliate in a sheath it is similar to the guy that we saw before let's give it a little quick zoom in here and they're a great sign too to see them um, they are very similar as far as they not have the long elongated stem but they are inside of that little sheathed pocket there and I don't know what he's doing maybe he's on his lunch break maybe he's taking a quick nap or just hanging out it looks like there might be two of them in there but they will come in and out of that sheath they have little hairs uh, for their mouth and you can sometimes see those moving around but let's get on to the movement that we're witnessing on screen here. Let's make sure that's focused in for everybody. These are some crawling ciliates. Um, I'm going to put their real name on the screen because it is eluding uh, me right now. But these guys are a good sign in your process too. It's not bad to see them. It's good to see diverse life. When you are looking under the microscope, 
you want to see diverse life. You don't want to see all just one bug. You don't want to see no bugs. You want to see a good mixture of them. So these guys, they are just, you could tell how excited they are. That means they got plenty of air. There's plenty of poopy in there. They're just crawling all around. Looks like, I don't know, you know, what they're trying to do. They're trying to maybe, uh, uh, you know, look for their next snack, build a fort in the flock. I don't know, but they are great signs. Good to see them moving around, being so active. And let's keep moving on. Let's zoom back out. You can get lost uh, in these slides. It's very easy for me, especially just to be studying the flock. I'm looking for the filaments. I'm looking for all kind of cool stuff, not just the bugs. So uh, forgive me if I get kind of lost in the moment. So here's one of those, again, another one of the um, stalkciliates that is in a sheath. That's a good view of him. He's nice. He's out of the sheath and opened up. Let's zoom in on that for you. There we go. Got him. So that's a great shot of what they look like. Try to get it honed in. Um, yeah, you can see on the screen, try to get it honed in on those hairs. You can see those hairs kind of moving around, and that's what they like to do. You'll see them when there's a lot of movement on there. They'll kind of retract back into that sheath for protection, and then when they're out in full bloom like that, it's kind of very similar to a stalk ciliate, whereas it's more flower-like, kind of looks like a bell shape, um, but that's good. You can see the little bubbles bouncing around there, and uh, he's moving them around with those hairs I referred to earlier. You see all that one just kind of zip by, but you'll see like kind of that little cyclone action around them when those when those fibers, their teeth are moving in like that, and that's how they're kind of pulling stuff to them. Uh, that's a great critter to see right there. Another stalk ciliate, and that's a good sign of life for our process. So let's back back up. Let's keep moving on. Uh, we got another stalk ciliate in the sheath great sign and then right below that we're coming up on a bristol worm now these guys they're cool to see because they're a lot larger bug they're one of the larger ones you're going to see in wastewater and it does look like an earthworm but bristol worm has kind of that bristol tint color to it and he's got lots of long kind of like hairy whiskers on him and that's your indicator that he is that that bristol color there so um, let's watch him for a second. You see that little free swimmer, a little crawling ciliate in there. He's chilling. He's probably hiding in the flock from that cat. Um, too many of these is definitely a bad sign for your system. Indicates older sludge. Um, you don't want too many of them to predominate your slide. If you're looking under a microscope and all you're seeing are these guys, that's not good. So definitely want to increase your waste into that point. But for this purpose, we've seen some good life already. We've got this one cat just chilling. Um, yeah, he's very active. Some of them I've seen, they're just chilling very slow. Other ones, just like this, kind of like almost in attack mode. Um, it's like watching an action flick, but he uh, is definitely active. He's just searching for some food and doing his thing. Probably trying to figure out what, uh, what he's doing on the microscopic slide. But there he is. That's a great shot of them two together. That's, uh, that just goes to show you that it's not bad to see these things. You can see that stalk ciliate on screen and you can see that bristle worm. So the combination of the two aren't necessarily a bad thing. Again, diverse life in your population, that's a great thing. Um, very cool to see this guy though puts a lot of action to it and again he's active so he's a great one to spot let's keep moving though another stalk on that um, piece of flock right there the flock looks good this is a little bit bigger pieces that's what I wanted to see and whoa there's another bristle worm how about that so don't make me eat my words Matthew actually yeah that's a bristle worm He's active, and there's two. So we'll get to see this interaction, see what's going on. Um, not necessarily a bad thing. Everything else in the process, you have to take into account, right? Just because I saw three Bristol worms doesn't mean, oh my God, like, we're, something bad's going on. 
I would definitely say you need to watch the numbers, need to make sure you're going out there, you're looking at your basin, watching the color of the mixed liquor, all of those things. As long as everything else is adding up, you're getting good numbers, and these guys don't start predominating, I think you're okay. Um, cool to see them. Again, let's try to, if we can catch one, maybe taking a nap, that would be great. Try to zoom in on them, but I don't want to try to zoom in and then lose them. Uh, cool to watch them in action. They're there's some cool guys. Uh, again, not a good bug. You don't want to see them, uh, a lot of them, but uh, it's fun to see them under the microscope and to see see what's going on. So there's some more good flock. It's always exciting. You never know what you're going to see. There's some good signs of life there. Stalk ciliates. We've seen free swimmers. We've seen uh, Bristol worms. So all of those things are good indicators of life and good indicators that our process is doing what it's supposed to be doing. There's a few more stalk ciliates in the sheath right there. So those guys, great signs of life. That means our process is, is more than likely doing good. We have seen a few worms. That's okay. And we're going to keep scrolling down the slide here, see what we can get into. So this again, this is just one drop of wastewater. So imagine you've already seen this much microorganism activity in just one drop and you have hundreds of thousands if not millions of gallons at your plant, right? Constantly, all day, consuming the influent and reproducing and just doing what they do and uh, it's a very large process. It can get out of hand very quickly. And there's our first row of fur. Uh, I thought I spotted a small one earlier, but I don't know if I'm gonna put that in the video, but this guy is chilling and he's still, so let's try to zoom in on him and get you an up close view. Of this guy, so he is uh, he's got the same mouth, that little kind of vacuum whiskers in the front there. He's got a pronged tail, almost looks like a, um, drawing a blank here, Matthew, stingray. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, he is uh, another one of the, in the rotifer family. He is not necessarily bad. A predominance of him would be bad, but just seeing one or two, that's a good sign of life. That means you got bugs all throughout the age process. That means your process, as far as the system goes, is performing well, right? You got enough food in there for, for older bugs, for younger bugs, all that kind of stuff. So he's not a bad thing. Let's make sure that's uh, zoomed in, sorry, or focused in. That's a great shot of him, though. Um, he is just hanging out right there, and we got him, oh, sorry. Yeah, see that tail folding up? So he's not, he's, he's a good bug to see, um, just as long as your slide's not full of them. So again, you want to see diverse population, you want the, um, predominance of your bugs to be more of the uh, crawling ciliates and more of the stalk ciliates. That's what you want. You don't want them overly young. You don't want amoebas and flagellates and, and, and too young and old and the same reason you don't want it too old. You don't want all rotifers or all bristle worms. Those are not good indicators that your process is performing well when those are predominant in your system. So can't speak enough when you regarding the microscope regarding your the the bugs you're looking at um, predominance is key and you want a diverse population I know I've probably repeated that 50,000 times but it's important so again this is one drop of wastewater and we've already seen so much it's a uh, pretty cool that with just one little tiny drop uh, what you're able to see and things you're able to know about your system very very cool so let's scroll back up. We're almost done here with this slide. Um, the flock's been looking great. You had some smaller flock. You had some larger flock. There's some large flock there. Um, there is a little dude free swimming. And then there is another rotifer. So let's try to catch that guy. That's a great shot of that rotifer there. Again, not bad. He's only the second one we've seen. 
but he's a different style rotifer. Um, he's kind of got that fork tail, a little bit longer, and he is, as you can tell, a lot more active than the first guy we came across. So he's just going to be swimming around through there, munching on stuff, doing his thing. Cool little bug to see. Hope you guys can see that good on the screen there. Um, I forget, I got to keep checking. Make sure I'm focused in. But that's a great shot of them. That was it. We saw some great bugs in there. We saw some Bristol worms, a couple rotifers, lots of stalk ciliates. We saw. Uh, some free swimmers, some crawling ciliates. So all that's a great sign of life. That's a diverse population. Again, that's what you want to see when you're looking at your wastewater under the microscope. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, Operator Mindset. And there's going to be more microscopic reviews and bugs, all things wastewater coming soon. Hope you liked the video. See you soon.